So hello, it's me, Denny Daniel, and I'm here with Amy and Mike. And uh, they came all the way from, uh, well, I guess New York and Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far. And they saw the Museum of Interesting Things, all the stuff, so they were here for about three or four weeks. Uh, and now they're finally done seeing everything in the room. Uh, and I brought uh, these three packages here. They're going to each open up a new acquisition for the museum. Uh, now, I do this like a 42nd Street shell game, which I'm born and raised in this town and remember 42nd Street shell games. Uh, they would go to 42nd Street, they'd put up a little table like this one, and they'd have three shells, and they'd put a quarter under one of the shells, right, and they'd mix up the shells like that, and you had to guess which shell had the quarter, and then you would win something. Now here, I don't have three shells, there isn't a quarter under these boxes, and you win nothing. <laughs> but, the one similarity is this. I do mix them up like this. So this is me mixing up the packages like that. That's me mixing up the packages so that you get confused. Are you confused? I want this one. <laughs> you want that one? She's not confused at all. She's like, I want that one. Okay, so you get that one. And then uh, which one do you want to open? Any one you like? <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, there's your scalpel. Oops, sorry. And there's your scalpel. Uh, just try not to uh, cut yourselves, cut each other, or cut me. <laughs> but if you do, I have Civil War and earlier surgical tours, the, uh, tools that I can cure you. Are they sterilized? This one's a bleeder. No, wow. <laughs> a shot of whiskey and you're fine. <laughs> Remember, if you cut him, I've got a prosthetic leg for him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wood. It's perfect. Oh, I won't get stopped when I go to the airport. So. Playboy! Ah. <laughs> Interesting one for you to open. Now, we're not, can we show the cover? We can show the cover. <laughs> okay, good. Now, why did I buy a Playboy for the Museum of Interesting Things? And there's the cover. Now, we're showing this cover because she's actually really a special person. Um, this is the first um, Jewish oh. virgin playmate. Yes, she, she touts herself as the first Jewish playmate, Jewish virgin playmate. And she's also very interesting. She's the daughter of a guy called uh, Bernard of Hollywood. And Bernard of Hollywood was very famous. He shot everybody from, like... Marilyn Monroe, all these famous, he shot almost every famous person in Hollywood, and this was his daughter. And she wanted to be the centerfold of Playboy, so she's the first Playboy centerfold, um, Playboy of the Month, that was Jewish and virgin. I think it's 1966 is the issue, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's why we got this, because it was kind of cool and kind of interesting. That, and we do have a, 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 an adult show as well, but it's also part of, you know, just a funny uh, t tidbit. She actually is still alive and has books on her, on her dad's photography. And his photography is brilliant. This guy was an amazing photographer. So you should definitely get her, her books and learn about, about this. Then we found out that some other girl said, you're not the first. Jewish. Jewish playboy, playmate. Apparently there was one in 1959 that also had a centerfold, and she's still alive, and ended up complaining, saying, I was the first. So now she says, well, I, w I was actually the first virgin, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jewish one. And actually, she didn't let the Playboy photographers take the pictures. Her dad didn't take the pictures either, because she is, you know, racy in the pictures. But she had someone take the pictures. It had to be done in a special studio. They were really actually particular in how they took the pictures. And she really is, like, one of the coolest people in the world. She's very smart, very cool. The pictures look very girl next door. Um, so I was like, wow, that's kind of a cool tidbit to add. This is a thick issue. I never knew the issue say, like that. Yeah, wow. yeah, this is serious. Uh, I bought it, of course, for the article. Of course. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a cool one. What did you open? <gasps> wow. This is actually really important. And funny enough, it, it, it's, you know, I almost feel like often people open up things that are ironic or uncanny to their personalities. I, I have to wonder about that one. <laughs> uh, but often, and that's about 80%. Um, 10 percent it's random and it's just you know whatever 10 percent it's opposites and people open up something that's the opposite of their personalities and those happen every so often I think what might have happened was we made it flipped even because I noticed five percent flip because I went to NYU and I learned this at NYU these are the new and you go to NYU so oh went to NYU and this is uh, the Siegfried saga, which is the New Belungenlied sagas. 
And this is one of the reasons I started this museum. Uh, that's why I bought this one. Um, I, one of my majors was also literature. And uh, the Nubelangen Ride and, and Tristan and Isolde and all those old Celtic Teutonic tales uh, I learned at NYU and it kind of teaches you chivalry and knights and dragons and all that cool stuff. Um, and I ended up buying 100, uh, 250 antique books before I graduated at NYU because of that education. And that was my beginning of like, I always collected, but that was my beginning of collecting antiques. Mm. Uh, so to honor that teacher who I actually dedicated the museum to, I actually got uh, the VHS of the Sixty thing. And I've even gotten the original 16 millimeter films mm. of this as well. They're also sitting in the box somewhere over there. So that's a very cool one for, for you guys to open. And it's kind of dear to me also. Uh -huh. So very cool. Both of them are very cool. Being that I'm also Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and God, she's cute. I would have dated her. <laughs> so let's say goodbye to the world. Bye, world. Bye.